Well, good afternoon and welcome to this week's edition of Munch and Learn. My name is Sarah Lorenz. I'm the events manager at the Dixon and just have a few reminders to go over before we begin. We are recording this session. You can find it on the Dixon's YouTube channel um, or any session prior to today's also. And usually we ask everyone to stay on mute and give the speaker a chance to get through the program. But today, uh, Danny has said that if we have any questions during his presentation, we can feel free to ask them. So at some point after Danny is finished with the slide, he will, he might ask for questions. And if you don't hear him do that, please feel free to put your questions in the chat and we'll get to them as Danny calls for them. So now I would like to introduce Danny Broadway. He is an artist from our current exhibition, Memphis 2021, but also obviously been an artist for a very long time in Memphis. He is an artist who likes to use kind of every component of art, color, composition, lines, shape, and form to set the mood and to illustrate various aspects of life. He's inspired by almost everything, historical themes, family, um, current issues and events, people, music, sounds, books he's read. Um, Danny's work can also be found on his website, dannybroadway.com. And he also has a studio who may tell you more about that. Uh, so Danny, the floor is yours. All right, all right. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> uh, thank you for spending your time during lunch today to listen to me talk about my work. Uh, I'm super excited to be uh, showing my work at the Dixon. You know, being around Memphis for as long as I have uh, and visiting the Dixon over the years, it's just an honor, a complete honor for me to consider myself uh, an artist that's had work hanging on the walls in the Dixon. So um, I'm just super excited about that. And I hope that everybody gets a chance to go by and check out the show because it's a really, really awesome show. And it, and it shows a lot about what Memphis has to offer uh, as far as the, the art, the artwork that comes out of the city. So I'm going to be basically talking through a PowerPoint. I am uh, in Nashville currently. I, I was hoping to uh, maybe do some sort of painting demo for you all uh, for this um, lunch and learn, but I think that the uh, PowerPoint format is gonna work really well for me right now. Uh, I will add that I am uh, currently pursuing MFA um, and I'm doing a three week residency at Belmont University. So uh, I am committed to this, but also committed to uh, my schoolwork as well. And I'm just trying to balance a lot of different things. So. Uh, I'm going to be sharing my screen here. All right, can everybody see that? Okay. All right, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be uh, kind of doing this conversation style, pretty laid back. I like to try to relax myself when I get in front of a lot of people because I get a little nervous and sometimes get ahead of myself. So I wanna just kind of sit back and talk through these slides and give you guys a chance to uh, interact with me if, if, if you like. Um, basically, uh, I've been creating art for over 25 years, um, mostly in Memphis because I've spent the majority of my life in Memphis. Um, I have a very diverse uh, client base and I've been able to profit through my studio practice. And uh, I, I always refer back to my uh, college professor. Her name was Beth Edwards. Some of you may know her in that <clears throat> she, she told me to always set my life up to where making art was something that was easy to do and not something that was a, a hard task or a hard chore. So that really stuck with me. And uh, ever since I graduated uh, from the University of Memphis, I've always tried to live after that model of, of setting up my life to where I could always uh, create my artwork. Let's see here. Okay, let's go back. Um, <clears throat> brief, briefly, a little bit of this bio that I put in here. Color, composition, line, shape, form are all essential elements that I use to um, set moods and illustrate aspects of human life. Uh, when I was very small, 
Uh, I was a very quiet young man uh, who lived in a household that wasn't very uh, artistic driven. In other words, there weren't there were not a lot of people um, in my uh, household or even in my family or my upbringing that had any concept of what art was or what it meant to be an artist or what potential you might have as an artist. Uh, so I was fortunate enough to um, have grandparents that sent me to art camps every summer because they knew that that was one thing that I was interested in because I would draw all the time. I would draw on the furniture. I would draw on my clothes. I would draw on all kinds of things uh, that I wasn't supposed to draw on and don't necessarily know why. It was just something that I was always inclined to do. So it's, it came very natural for me to, um, to draw things. Um, as I grew up and as I, I became a, a professional in the art world, I also uh, gravitated towards working with young people. Um, I've currently been uh, the artist in residence at St. George's Independent School in Collierville for the last 15 years. Seems like more like three years, but it's gone by really fast and it's been a really, really fun experience. And I've uh, been able to uh, touch the lives of many young people who are now, uh, some who are now actually professional artists who have gone off to go to art school to, um, to pursue their own passions for art that they've come up with. So that's a very gratifying uh, experience to be able to work with young people and to share and to be able to help them uh, become better artists. I put this video in here just for your enjoyment and mine too, because I haven't seen it in a while. And I'm just gonna play it. It's kind of fast, but I'll. I'll play it. Yeah, so that gives you a little bit of an idea of kind of the process that I go through when I create painting. Um, most of the work that I'm going to show you all today is, is uh, created with acrylic paint, uh, mostly on canvas or either on board. <clears throat> uh, there's a strong element of drawing in my work because that is kind of the, um, the root of where my artistic um, interest started was uh, drawing, uh, maybe starting to copy things that I saw in magazines or comic strips or things that were very heavy with line that detailed certain things. So I've always been really, really attracted to the line and drawing. Uh, as I've been uh, producing more work and also studying in school, I've been interested in some other things that I've never tried before. And that's one of the things that I would like to also add about my experience uh, pursuing my education at a higher degree. Um, I, I've, I've really expanded the things that, that I'm interested in and the things that I'd like to explore. So here's another small video that I'm gonna show you before I get into my, my talk. <clears throat> so that was a um, animation that I created uh, for one of my grad school projects. And it was just really fun to try something new. You know, I've been doing one thing uh, for a very long time 
Uh, I've done some other things too, but most people seem to um, know my work, that know my work, they know my painting, uh, especially around Memphis. Um, so this, this first painting I put in here because it was something that I did that kind of reminded me of my childhood, reminded me of myself when I was uh, young, starting to um, explore uh, drawing and explore learning how to work with different uh, drawing tools. Uh, you can all can imagine uh, seeing kids outside drawing with chalk on the ground and having fun doing that. That's a very fun uh, activity. And I also believe that a lot of people um, start out with a lot of artistic ability. And as we grow older and get into uh, things that aren't necessarily artistic, we kind of lose that, uh, that knack or ability. But I think that it's there. I think that it's there for most people. Um, some of the inspirations uh, that I have for my work come from uh, Memphis. They come from the area where I am the things that I've seen. Uh, this particular piece, um, I, I um, was inspired by Carol Clore. Uh, a lot of you probably know Carol Clore's work uh, in Memphis, uh, but his work is uh, of course expanded way beyond Memphis, but uh, he has very strong connections to Memphis. And I actually used to show in the same gallery that kind of got Carol Clore going was the Lisa Kurtz gallery. Um, and, and I show with Lisa Kurtz for maybe about five years before she uh, closed. And, 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 and um, also before that, I worked a little bit with David Lusk in his gallery. So um, in the beginning uh, of my professional career, looking for um, inspiration and things that spoke to me, it, it always kind of goes back to my history. Um, first of all, I, I wasn't born in Memphis. I was born in Arkansas, uh, in Little Rock, excuse me, which is right across the bridge, which is now not so easy to go across. Um, I haven't tried to go across it uh, recently and I uh, hope that I don't have to uh, anytime soon because of what I've seen on the news. But uh, in Arkansas, uh, the history of my family pretty much goes back to sharecropping, uh, farming, very simple living. Uh, of course, uh, you know, my, my family are, um, they come from slaves pretty much, you know, they come from slaves and the slaves came to uh, America. A lot of my family has been documented going to South Carolina and then being brought here to um, the Mid-South area. And there they, you know, they were farmers, they were working on plantations and working for slave owners and you know, and then once that kind of ended, they they started kind of working as sharecroppers and working to try to kind of make a living for their own family in their in their own ways that, since they weren't slaves anymore. So a lot of these traditions were um, things that were taught to me from my grand great grandparents. I can remember when I was really really small, you know, listening to stories about hanging clothes outside to dry or going outside and picking cotton. If you'll, if you'll notice in the paintings, I, I usually don't de depict uh, figures picking cotton. These are older paintings. I always like to kind of change it up and I uh, depict them picking flowers a lot of times instead of cotton. But the imagery of the figures comes from kind of those um, old images that you see in black and white photos of people picking cotton. Uh, but I use the uh, flowers and the idea of the women picking to tell stories of my own um, choosing. Uh, a lot of times it's to turn it around, kind of make it more of a positive story, or just to highlight the, um, the historical aspect of it. And then also to be able to use the landscape, use the color, use the feeling, use the movement that I like to put in my work. And this, these themes you will see explored numerous times in the in the slides that I'm going to show you and these these paintings are all done over the course of probably 25 years. Um, some of them are kind of put in an order, but some of them are just kind of randomly placed in where I feel like they fit in. And also an another big part of um, 
my uh, co contribution to Memphis is working with a lot of nonprofits around the city. Uh, one, one of the first experiences that I remember was working with the Memphis Oral School for the Deaf. Um, so I was invited to go in and tour the school and just kind of look around. And then I was commissioned to do two paintings for their uh, lobby at the Memphis Oral School for the Deaf. So if you're ever there, it's, it's in Germantown, uh, you can walk in and you can see these two large paintings that I painted uh, and it's called Whispering Secrets. And the idea was that the children were uh, learning how to speak and they were getting these ear plant ear plants in their ears and they were hearing sounds for the first time and uh, I was just inspired by the uh, concept of giving and receiving and these paintings were uh, just a uh, some of that. Uh, since then uh, I learned kind of the importance of working with nonprofits and also use that to almost as a business model to put my work and myself in front of a lot of people um, because there are lots of uh, opportunities to donate or give or show or share. And I started really um, exploring that around town, around the city, all over the city. And this was a live painting that I was doing for um, St. Jude at the time. They were hosting a concert and uh, they asked me to go in and paint and they auctioned the painting off at the end of the night. And that, that became something that I started doing for a long time, just because it was uh, a way to give back. And then it was also a way to um, open my eyes and explore some things that were uh, available. And uh, this, uh, this is um, Rick Shadiak over on the left. He is the uh, CEO, the head man over at St. Jude. And this painting was uh, purchased by um, Jarvis Greer. You probably know this face from uh, the news station. If you ever watched the Memphis News, he does the sports. He and his wife, she also works at St. Jude. So it's also beneficial to my career as an artist to work with these nonprofits because you get connected to people in the community. Uh, this is a painting that I was commissioned to do for FedEx. Uh, they sent me to Detroit uh, with the National Black MBA Conference, commissioned me to do a painting which they auctioned and sold back to a charity. And it was just a really nice experience to be able to uh, work with FedEx. Um, I guess this would be a good point for me to stop and see if anybody has any questions. I don't want to just talk your ears off. Hopefully nobody's asleep yet. All right, well, no pressure, just I'm gonna keep going. Um, so uh, back to kind of working with the community um, and, and the way things work, like over, over the course of my career, I've learned that the more things that you get involved in, the more opportunity that you potentially set up for yourself to have. I started working with the um, Memphis Redbirds a long time ago they were uh, locally hosting a civil rights themed baseball game uh, at the AutoZone Park. And they were honoring the old Nash, the old Negro Baseball League. Uh, there used to be a team in Memphis called the Memphis Red Sox. And they would invite the players to come to the um, stadium for the day. And uh, the, the players would wear the jerseys of the old uh, Negro teams. and. They did this for about three years and they commissioned me to do a piece for each um, event. Well, the entire time um, they were working with uh, Major League Baseball. Uh, they, were, they were interested in this concept of taking the idea of the civil rights game and making it kind of a national event that happened within uh, Major League Baseball. So the, uh, op the person that was uh, over the operation in New York was here working with the Civil Rights Museum. And he saw these paintings uh, uh, in the office and he asked who the artist was. And to make a long story short, they commissioned me from the National uh, uh, Baseball League. The, the, uh, 
it's just slipping my mind. What is it, what's it called? But we we all know the National Baseball League, and I designed the official uh, Civil Rights Game logo, which they uh, used all over the country. They had it on ESPN, and they made a lot of paraphernalia and um, uh, just used it to market the whole event. So that was one big thing that I took away from uh, working working with uh, organizations and just putting your work in front of people. Um, so, so yeah. And the way, the way that I started here in Memphis, um, showing my work is uh, when I was in college, I was uh, taking classes. Uh, I was just fresh into Memphis. I didn't know anyone here. I was totally new to trying to learn how to uh, go deeper into art. It was just something that I was interested in. But I met, uh, I made friends with Terry and Jerry Lynn. Uh, you guys probably know them as twins. Uh, at the time they were twins and they were working together. They're still twins, but they don't really work together as much as they did. Um, but at the time, I mean, we were, I was 17. They were probably 18 or 19. And they were uh, showing their work in galleries and traveling all over the country. Uh, you know, they were, famous because they were working together and they were doing all of these great things. And I just was in awe of what they were doing because I just had never seen anything like it. You know, being from Little Rock, I, I didn't know any artists. I didn't know any um, anything that you could possibly do with your work besides just get someone to say that they really liked your drawing. Um, but these guys were taking it to the next level. So uh, they, they invited me to uh, go with them to New York to a show that they were having. And I hung out with them and just kind of walked around and uh, was really just inspired by, you know, their business sense and the things that they knew and, and how willing they were to share with me what they were learning and what they were doing. And uh, they turned me on to a gallery here in town on Bill Street. It was called Justine's Gallery which eventually turned into the Willis Gallery. And uh, being the location that it was in, uh, one of the common themes that the gallery owner uh, would always uh, encourage me to work with was music uh, because there's so much tourism that goes downtown and people just love music. So I started painting all of these music, musically themed images. And in the process, I really started to gain an appreciation for the, um, the collaborative nature of music and the colorful nature of music. And I really started wanting to uh, explore that and incorporate that into my, into my work. So you will see a lot of musically uh, themes, uh, images in my work, um, even through the slides that I'm gonna show you here. And I have to say that Memphis has been a big part of that, that inspiration is because um, Music is so rich here, the blues and um, soul and just the richness. Uh, then, uh, so, so these are also just images that I'm showing you from early stages in my career. Um, I'm working with the palette knife. I'm exploring themes of clothes hanging. Uh, this, this particular painting is called Crucified Linens. Uh, and it's kind of the idea that the, the clothing hangs on the cross, a lot like um, Jesus hung on the cross. And uh, they're, they're, when they're dry, they're new, they're fresh, they're um, born again. So I, I started taking the idea of something simple, like hanging clothes and using it more in a symbolic nature and giving it a symbolic title to go along with it. Also just exploring themes of family life and things that were that are interesting to me, things that I know about, memories that I have. I, I remember my grandfather teaching me how to fish uh, for the first time and I, I developed a really strong passion for fishing. Uh, I love the uh, just calmness of it and the um, patience that it takes to catch a fish sometimes it's just a really nice thing to be there and uh, I, I expand on these themes in a lot of different ways throughout the way that I depict landscape 
uh, the way that I depict the figure. And then um, color. Color and movement is also a really big part of, of what I like to uh, explore when I create work. Um, this is a painting that I created for the Women's Foundation uh, that I was commissioned to paint and it's called The Circle Unbroken. Uh, this painting has been published and it's been mm, sold. I think uh, lots of limited editions have been uh, sold for this as a fundraising element. I think it raised a, a pretty good amount of money and it spread all over the country. It's just one of those images that people uh, always ask me about. They always go back to. And uh, I feel connected to this image in a way, but then in a way I feel like since I've done it, I've moved on. I've moved to other ways of creating art, um, but I still revisit this painting often and I want to go back to the place where I was when I was creating it because it, it makes me feel really good. And I just really like the, um, the unity that it represents. So you may have a question or two, anyone? Danny, I will just tell you that the last time you asked for questions, our chat lit up okay. with everybody in the audience saying, we're here, we're listening. Okay. So okay. <laughs> that, right. and also um, Julie found us the word you were looking for, Major League Baseball. Yes, that is it. That is so easy, but so yeah. hard to come up with under pressure. Yeah, Major League Baseball, right. Yeah. Yes. So no questions yet, just comments about how beautiful this is. Okay. Actually, I have a question, uh, Danny. Yes. Danny, I'm really interested in how you, um, you've talked about your use of color and, and things, but I'm really interested in how you make decisions about what colors blend into other colors. Like I was really thinking about it with that earlier piece with the um, musicians, because some of it looked like it was, you know, like, representational but it, some of it looked like there were pieces that were pulled from other places and some of it you sort of obscured and some of it you let come forward and so I don't know I'm real curious about that if you could just talk about that I mean it shows up in a lot of the work but here I think even more more yeah. so okay well this this is actually a newer painting like I showed it in the beginning of the, um, the slideshow but it, it's a painting that I created probably within the last three years um, and it, it is very um, selective in the color choice, uh, mainly because I want it to have kind of a nostalgic feeling uh, with the browns and the dark, darker tones, the black and the, the burnt umbers. But there's also, it doesn't show up in the picture, there's also a lot of metallic uh, layering. I'm using a lot of gold leafing, uh, things of that nature. And then the subtle hints of color that you see are really just there to kind of work as focal, focal points. Uh, not necessarily for any specific reason, uh, only thinking maybe the color blue, it just reminds me of blues, like in the guy's blue jeans and this, then the slight hint of blue in his jacket. But it's mostly a, a play on composition and a play on the sound, the sound that they're making. And, and then, then the, the kind of letting go, like they're, in the beginning of my career as an artist, I, I always wanted to kind of overwork these figures and paint them to a level of where the paint was so smooth and everything was just so refined and finished. Well, that kind of goes against the nature of jazz. It goes against the nature of blues. It kind of, it's more of a uh, collaborative kind of impromptu effort. And that's the way I wanted to approach this painting in kind of an impromptu, more of a uh, just impulsive way to create something. And, and, our, and from this point on, I put this in this painting, because I mean, in this slideshow, because from this point on, I have really um, wanted to adopt that concept of being looser, being a little bit more expressive, uh, allowing the painting to kind of happen itself instead of forcing it to paint and forcing it to happen. So that was kind of 
where this painting took me and where it's going. And it also is just kind of leading me into some other things in my, in my uh, pathway. So does that answer your question? Thank you. All right. All right. Then we go to um, just taking um, concepts that I am attracted to and things that I always revisit. And, I, and as I was looking through this PowerPoint, I noticed that I paint a lot of umbrellas. I paint a lot of women holding umbrellas. And I'm starting to understand a little bit more about why that is and, and why it's such a common theme in my work. Um, I always use that idea of the umbrella as a symbol for protection. And the, the symbol for protection can be protection in a lot of ways. It can literally be physical protection from the rain, physical protection from the sun, but it's also a spiritual um, connotation to protection, meaning that you are protected by God. You're protected by spirituality and you're also protected by your own mindset. So there's something uh, very um, connected about the, uh, the use of the umbrella. And you'll, you'll see some more images that way. Um, but, but mainly um, my work is, it can be whimsical. It can be very um, literal in its representation of things. However, um, I have a, a huge appreciation for color and I love to shake things up. I love to explore um, different ways of depicting things, um, things that are just playful and, and remind you of kind of like candy or fun or just bright and happy. Um, but then it's composition and then it's creating something original and the light beyond, like I, I, I'm really into perspective uh, seeing things that appear far away and, and understanding what's close and developing those relationships between these spaces. Uh, so this is kind of a common theme of play that I use when I'm exploring landscape. And these aren't necessarily landscapes that I've seen, um, but these have elements of landscapes that I've seen that I wanted to um, play around with and expand on. And these are tiny little paintings. Uh, they were like... Um, five by five, five inches by five inches. There were three of them that did together. And then I'm just kind of back to uh, exploring things that I, I can relate to. You know, I can relate to this as, as a child. We always had this tire swing in front of our house uh, where my grandmother lived and we would play on the tire swing. And it just uh, is something that comes up in my work uh, often as well. Uh, the tire swing and the tree and the um, hanging in front of the tree and just kind of the landscape and scenery around it. And then I, I, I was always really into horses as a child because my sister, who's older than me, she, uh, one of her teachers used to put on horse shows and she invited her to come and work one summer at her horse shows. And my sister started drawing these horses and bringing them home. And then I started copying her drawings uh, because I liked them. And then I started competing with her to draw the horses. And that was kind of what got me really going on drawing was the horses uh, starting out. So this was just kind of a little whimsical, playful painting that I uh, did about seeing things differently and looking for uh, interest in things that are kind of basic sometimes. Because I always feel like we take for granted so many things that happen around us all the time, just because we get busy or just because um, it's just easy to, to write off because it's, it becomes common. But the sun comes up every day and that, that's amazing in itself. If you think about it, if you stop and think about it, it's like, wow, that is just huge. Uh, also, when I was uh, a child, my grandmother used to really like the horse races. So we were in Little Rock and she would take us, even as kids, she would take us to Hot Springs and we would go and watch the horse races. And she would also let us bet on the horses. Of course, we couldn't bet ourselves, but she would bet for us. She would ask us which ones that we wanted to bet for us. So she would take a little money and 
bet on a horse for us. And sometimes we would win a little change and just a really good memory. And uh, working on the horse race painting was a really good opportunity for me to um, apply the same concepts that I apply to working with landscape and perspective and to create a view or an angle that you can associate with attending a horse race. And uh, this, this painting, I, I did this painting maybe 10 years ago, pretty large painting, it lives in someone's house in Philadelphia now, I think. And um, looking for things that represent real time experiences or real places is a big, became a big thing that I, that I started to explore in my work. Um, just being able to address what is actually going on sometimes is really important for me as an artist. And this was uh, an image that I had taken at a bus stop uh, when I was traveling and I just uh, took it with my camera and then I really wanted to just expand on it. So I took it to my studio and drew out the figures and kind of painted it and edited out things that I didn't feel like were necessary, but ultimately we're uh, just interested in composition, color, perspective, all of those things. And this is uh, one of my earlier paintings, uh, a lot like the smaller paintings that I showed you dealing with perspective and light, color. And here are some paintings from kind of the same time frame. Um, and as you can see, they all kind of have very similar elements. There's the horizon in the background. There's the light that's coming from beyond. There are the figures uh, that are in the foreground that are interacting with the landscape or interacting with some other figure um, in the distance. And it's just a really uh, fun way to play around with imagery and to develop something. I, I stuck with this format for quite a while um, because I felt like there were just so many ways that I could use this format to tell stories. And uh, here, here you have kind of the walking man, which is another common theme that I like to use. Uh, the man kind of going somewhere, he's traveling or migrating, which kind of reminds me of the great migration, uh, going to a better place or leaving somewhere where you don't want to leave to go somewhere to come back eventually. Um, so these were um, three paintings that were created roughly during the same time, time frame. And uh, some of these paintings I'm showing um, belong, live, live in Memphis because uh, the majority of the work that I've sold, um, I sold it to people that live in Memphis. So you may have seen some of these paintings before. And then kind of expanding on the theme, uh, working with uh, the women with the flowing dresses and the unity and the light and the spirituality. And then uh, being, being where we are, we are um, in a very uh, interesting place for transportation. There's a lot of transportation that goes through Memphis. And there's a train that I hear every day uh, that I can hear from a distance, but it kind of, you kind of get used to it and you don't hear it as much until you have to stop at it when you are trying to get somewhere. And then it, then it kind of reminds you that it's there. But uh, I like to speak about history and I like the simplicity of the train car. So I basically uh, just kind of took these down to the bare shape and form and then played around with color, composition and landscape. Uh, and then just talking about stories and images. And uh, as you continue to work, you, you want to continue to talk about history because that's important. I, I feel like um, incorporating history into a painting enriches the painting in such a way that makes it more important. So I am really attracted to black and white photos. My uh, father, uh, recently gave me a book that had a lot of uh, black and white photos from old newspaper articles that his aunt left him uh, when she passed away. 
And I was really uh, inspired by just so much of the imagery that was there that it made me kind of start incorporating some of that imagery into my work and uh, just thinking about the mentality of uh, people in a certain time frame, Black people in particular, the things that were important to them, the things that were on their minds and the things that they were working towards and struggling for and um, just being um, proud about. Uh, this, this painting is called A Penny Earned and it just kind of an uh, image of these gentlemen kind of sitting around maybe talking about their jobs or looking for jobs or waiting for work and uh, try to uh, use a cooler color palette to give it kind of a somber mood and the angle of perspective, you kind of look down on these figures so that you can somehow kind of uh, be involved in their um, conversation. And my work continued to talk about history and talk about me, um, talk about my grandfather who was a sharecropper who uh, was working for a farmer who promised to buy him a truck for his sharecropping business, but didn't buy him a truck, which ultimately uh, led him to leave Mariana, Arkansas to move to Little Rock, Arkansas, where I was born. So this painting was really inspired by that story of my grandfather and his truck. Um, this, this gentleman in the picture has his truck and he has his home. So essentially he kind of has everything. Uh, the way that the way that I see it and uh, and then uh, also my work uh, started to become transformative uh, like I said before I really uh, liked the idea of working with black and white photos and history tells you so much but some of that history is really dark and really hard to digest and I like taking those images and transforming them into something that's a little bit more of what I can feel is digestible. Uh, like for instance, these gentlemen uh, on the chain gang uh, were working, they're young, they look very young, they look like teenagers. And part of the chain gang was developing these songs, just like, uh, just like slaves would develop songs to sing while they worked and to, uh, allow themselves to kind of escape from their situation. And the painting on the right was me essentially freeing these gentlemen from their situation and giving them tools that they could take and uh, play with instead of work with. And along with playing with uh, the concept of transformation, I'm playing with the composition. I'm starting at this point, I'm starting to incorporate these swirl patterns in the background uh, that represent just kind of the mood or the aura of the, um, the experience for these gentlemen. And that's something that I'll continue to um, evolve over the course of the next few years and, and um, just kind of playing with composition and playing with atmosphere and uh, going in kind of a different direction than where I started. And uh, ultimately just um, going back and forth. This is a, a newer painting inspired by Overton Park. Overton Park in Memphis is, I live in Midtown and um, I spend a lot of time in Midtown. And if you go to Overton Park on Sunday, uh, you can find a number of different things. You can find people playing the drums outside. You can hear it from miles away. You can find musicians, you can find people just walking with their family, you can find dogs. And um, I uh, photographed different people at different places in the park. And I took all of those different photographs and kind of came up with my own composition to, to talk about Overton Park. And uh, this is a more recent uh, painting that's titled Covered. And it goes back to the concept of protection and the umbrella and community and what it means to be transparent. Uh, I specifically used a lot of transparent pigments so that you could see through the umbrellas and see what's behind what's being protected. Um, 
partly for uh, my own satisfaction because that was what I set out to do, but then partly also to relay the message of transparency. And then um, I started applying that concept of transparency to different ways of creating portraits of people. This is a student that I had at St. George's maybe four years ago who I uh, got this really great picture of. And I decided to start with kind of this atmospheric pattern background. And I superimposed his his portrait over the top of this pattern. And to me, it really activated the, the portrait. It, it activated something about the character of, of the gentleman in the portrait. And I kept expanding on that, um, applying the um, pattern designs in different ways and using it to create movement and to uh, enhance uh, some of the uh, feeling that you get from gesture, from body gestures, and from people moving. And continuing to move into the uh, kind of thematic um, things that you see or experience in the South historically. Um, church, church has been one place where people have always congregated for different reasons, especially in the Black community. Um, it's just a place where you can go and uh, release your feelings. You can praise, you can worship, you can be in community. And the, um, the atmospheric design within this painting also played a lot into the stained glass of the church. And that, that inspired a lot of other venues. It was like one thing you do sparks off something else and then you start a whole new journey into something else but you never really completely leave what you started you just expand and you always come back and then you go back and forth and things like these uh, presentations even for me it's, it's given me uh, time to look at my work and reflect on it and analyze some things that I was thinking and now for the future it gives me motivation and inspiration to to continue and uh, this leads me to talking about this piece, which is one of the pieces that's uh, hanging in the Dixon now, uh, one of the four pieces that um, I contributed to the show that was curated into the show, rather. I, I contributed it, but it was curated by someone else. And I'm very happy that it was put in the show. But as you can see, this is a progression of where I started where I started was I started with studying images and finding images that kind of represent my heritage and represent the history. And this painting is called Looking Ahead. And I've come to associate this pattern now with history, the design pattern, the uh, layered lines, the curves, the variations in color. It has a very, um, concrete meaning in that it's history. And the history is whatever that history is. It, it is your lineage. It is the people that come before you. It is the atmosphere. It is the care that God gives you. It is all of those things. And it's also composition and it's also color and movement and all of those things. And I'm looking around the city and I'm finding inspiration and other ways to start to work with this uh, design format, this layout. Not, not shying away from where I started, um, still very figurative in nature, still very landscape oriented, but really just more open and less uh, prone to specific details, a looser approach. And uh, that is what, that is the end of my slideshow for today. So I tried to kind of go back to where I started 
the things that I was uh, doing, the things that I was interested in, and kind of bringing you into uh, a current kind of mindset where I am, where, I, where if I encounter you at the Dixon during the opening, then this is where, this is where I am currently. Well, Danny, thank you very much. This was wonderful, a wonderful way for us to spend the last hour and enriching. Mm -hmm. I really liked um, your explanation of the symbolism of an umbrella. It is so much, it, it brings your paintings to life in such a different way to hear um, you express what you were thinking and what this meant to you. So we're grateful for that. And I have a question. Okay. Um, you sent me a little biography prior to the today. And mm -hmm. in it, you mentioned that even the seasons would affect the color palette that you choose. Mm -hmm. And I wondered if you choose what subject to paint next based on the mood you're in or where you're at, or do you choose the subject and theme and then like the mood Mm -hmm. you be like then you get into that mm -hmm. place okay. what drive what 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 how what guides you on choosing your next subject mm -hmm. well i think i've already chosen it i've already chosen it a long time ago it's just i have to become aware of what it is at that moment that it is calling me to make something so I've chosen to become an artist. I've chosen to open myself up to seeing things in a different way, but sometimes it's the encounter that, that sparks off what the next thing is, or it's what you learn. You know, I, I feel like um, since I've opened my mind up to grad school, I've, I've really uh, expanded my horizon and it's not always um, intentional. It sometimes just kind of happens. And uh, sometimes I, you know, I'll, I'll think to myself, yes, I really want to paint a landscape. I really want to paint a landscape, but I usually won't want to paint a landscape until I see one. You know, it's like I'm, I'm driving on the freeway and there's the sunset and you're like, oh, wow, that's beautiful, you know? And then when you get to your studio and you have all of these materials in front of you and you have a choice of a million things to make, you go to something that you are familiar with or something that caught you or that, that stuck with you. And that, that's kind of how that works for me. That's interesting. Thanks for sharing that. Um, can you elaborate on how, so this is a question by Daniel Sumler, how shapes reflect history? Okay, well, I think it's just like, uh, it, it goes back to uh, quilting and patterns. Um, this is a best, very specific way to deal with shapes uh, in the way that um, people dealt with quilting and patterns and layering, putting things together. Uh, when, you, when you go back to the uh, idea of quilting and slaves, for instance, slaves used patterns and signs and symbols to direct people as to where to go as to how to get out of slavery, you know? So in that particular instance, shapes and forms had a very concrete uh, purpose. For me, it's, it's a very vague, it's not necessarily concrete at this point. I am researching more on um, different symbols and different things that I can incorporate into my work. But for now, it's more of just like my own personal take on it. It's my own personal design, the way I lay it out, but it's meant to reflect uh, layers of things that happened before me, things that uh, are ben beneficial to me, things that are beneficial to people. Um, and it's not, it's not to say that this green shape represents life or this blue shape represents death or this represents my grandmother or this represents uh, you know, anything specifically, but as a whole together, it reminds me of generation to generation, the layer to layer, color next to color. Um, and that's, and then with the, with the historical imagery, the, the older images that I'm using it, it I'm using that to kind of enhance that idea. Thank you. That's, that's really beautiful. Um, I appreciate you elaborating. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for asking that question. Danny, I love your use of color. 
Thank you. Um, it, your paintings feel positive. They don't have, to me, they don't have a negative feeling at all. Um, also, the, your use of things that we take for granted or we've forgotten about watching the clouds or the kid on the, the swing. Very, very good. Thank you. Thank you. I, um, I, I, I feel connected to all of those things and I'm glad that they come across that way. Well, thank you um, to the guests in attendance for being here today and for Danny. Um, thank you so much for talking us through all of this. Uh, as Danny mentioned, he is accessible, not only if you see him at the Dixon, but you can reach out to him um, on Instagram and at dannybroadway.com. And um, for everyone else who's here, next week's program will be a talk by another Memphis 2021 artist. Her name is Justin Bowles and her topic is creating joy. We invite you to come in person to visit Memphis 2021 and also see our gardens. We've had some unseasonably delightful weather, so it's a great time to come. And uh, 